Right, we've got two gearboxes here, one of which is an extremely special gearbox. And um, it's, it's what well, it makes it even more special that this, is, this job that we're getting involved in here is for a much bigger build that's going on over the border. Um, but they've asked for Mr. Lankridge's help here because what makes this gearbox here special is that this is a column shift. Um, and this would have been out of a FJ43 from 1962, 1963. Um, so this would have had nothing, no sticks coming through the floor, um, no, no shifter for the full drive and low range through the floor. It would have all been on the column and on the dash itself. So it's very, very cool. We've got a second gearbox here, which is a manual stick shift one for, that we're gonna try and get some bits out of if we need it. Last time we did a th uh, early three speed, it took three gearboxes just to make the one. So uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, getting this inside, start work on it. But So this is out of a 1962, 1963 FJ43. Now, Tease bought these in back in the day, and this would have been a factory soft top as well, and it's gonna be a factory soft top again. Um, I'm very, very uh, excited to be part of this build, uh, and I can't wait to see the finished product. Uh, so. Anyway, without any further ado, let's get this into the workshop. Let Mick work his magic on this gearbox, strip it down. We're gonna get all these bits off. We're gonna get vapor blasting done. We're gonna get uh, anodizing done, um, you know, um, gold coating. Everything's gonna look, but even the bits that you can't see are gonna look fantastic on this one. So come on in, let's get it inside. Right, so we've got the, uh, the column shift free speed stripped down here into all its individual component parts. Uh, there are some really unique features about this gearbox, which I'll get into in a minute really, but um, we've got, what we've done, we, we've got stuff um, piled up, so stuff's gonna go for anodizing and um, uh, electroplating. We've got other stuff to go away to the vapor blaster, the, the casings to go away for blasting and painting. Um, and we're just going through all the components really on the table here. Now, there are some stuff where it's really surprising that they're still intact. So the diaphragm for the, the, the full drive selector is in really good condition. You know, this is 1961, 1962 stuff. So um, it's actually really surprising. Other stuff is not gonna go again. We've got broken components on the outside of the gearbox, which are gonna have to be fabricated. Um, we've got the, the, the cluster is not going to go again. This thing's been butchered over the years, crunching first gear there. Um, it's not a happy chappy. We've bagged and tagged all the bearings. Um, and so we'll, we'll, there's no kit for these, right? And I'll get onto this in a minute, but there's no kit for these. We're going to have to go and source these bearings, get them matched up again with the seals and all the needle rollers um, and, and try and compile all these bits. Now, this gearbox was not complete in the first place. We, we knew we were going to have to source parts. Usually, and Mr. Land Cruiser, we go outside, we've got plenty of early free speeds out there on the ground that we can go and nick bits. But this gearbox only ran from 1961 to 1962. And after that, they made a lot of really substantial changes um, when it comes to gear sizes, casings, um, bearing sizes, and all that stuff. So um, we need another um, three-speed column shift gearbox. Um, so we've put our feelers out there to the community. We're talking to guys in the States because in America they had a lot more of these early soft off land cruisers than we did here in, um, in Australia. So I think we've got our work cut out to find another gearbox that's going to complete this one to start with and, um, you know, come up with a cluster that's going to work. Otherwise, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna blow out really quickly. We're gonna have to get stuff custom made, but hopefully we don't have to do that. Hopefully we get a gearbox here or we'll find someone out there that's willing to part with one because they are uh, a rare piece of equipment. So um, we don't know where we're going from here, so we'll, we'll see what happens and hopefully we get a good result. Okay, while Richard's actually building the box, he's uh, got me running around grabbing all the components he needs to finish this job. 
and um, I've come down here to Pioneer Finishes and I've got to plug these guys. Um, so go onto your socials, Insta, Facebook. Uh, the reason I've got to plug them is, um, especially in our area, the quality of work, they're one of the only ones that I know that do the actual uh, vapor blasting, not sand blasting, it's vapor blasting. And these items actually, they look like they're painted and they've got a paint finish, but that's the quality that comes up in the, uh, the vapor blast. So this is, everything here is all our alloy, um, all our alley for uh, the three speed. And it's, it just comes up so neat. Now, this stuff, uh, it actually changes the texture of the top. So it, it's like it folds it over a little bit. So you can, now back at the workshop, they can spill grease on it. They can put their greasy fingers on it, bit of brake cleaner, it'll just wipe off. So it's um, also made it a lot nicer and it will, uh, not oxidize so easy, it will retain this finish. So uh, I'm gonna get it all back down uh, to Richard now and let him explain how it all goes back together and have a look what's going on. Let's get it to Richard. Right, so we've come a long way with this little free speed. We've, um, we've managed to source all the bearings, all the roller bearings, all the seals, and we've fabricated stuff. We've had to machine stuff. Um, it's, it's been an epic, epic journey, to be honest, but We've got all the pieces to the puzzle now, haven't we, Mick? That's it. And, um, and this is the point. We've actually already started to assemble some of it. Bef before, we better have a little look at the journey so far. Um, introduce Mick here. Mick works here at Mr. Land Cruiser. He's been here a few years now. Now, Mick has been building gearboxes all his professional career. And here at Mr. Land Cruiser, he probably builds about three to four gearboxes every single month that get convert to convert 40s, um, rebuild 60 gearbox, do automatic to manual conversions now this has been extra special in it yeah it has yeah we've um we, we've come across some some problems so what, what do you reckon the main problems that we come across on this gearbox uh, mainly the damage to things like the cluster shaft uh, first reverse gear yeah that's been that's been quite a cool one actually yeah. we've had to so, so what we've done here we've got a later model gear which was actually taller than that gear i've had it machined down to fit so it clears yep reverse and first it'll fit in there nicely now mm. in between the two gears because it was fouling on the reverse wasn't it yes, and it, it was. was also fouling on the transfer case itself now this right. changes in the next year 1963 that becomes flat the that's bearings right. recessed in yes. the in the other side of that and the seals further in that's right so yeah. this gear just wouldn't work so we've had it machined the angles are right and we just got to profile it slightly now but um the cluster was a real bad one wasn't it look at that that's yeah now um paul's good mate rob tiger in in the states actually um reached out to us because i reckon there's only a handful of these gearboxes in australia um and none of them are wrecking that's for sure so um he reached out to us and said that he's got a couple of these clusters so rob you're a legend we managed to source one from here get it all the way over from the states um, that's actually now sitting nicely inside this little free speed. We're just building up. Um, we've had to take a couple of bits back out of it to get them machined with that first reverse um, selector. But what else? What else, Mick? We've, oh, well, this is a cool one. I really want you to get, talk us through this one. Okay, cool fact here. This is a output shaft. The needle cage needle roller bearing in here goes all the way to the late model five speeds. That's cool. And in the same place, so it does the it, same job. The exact same Even though job. the gears yep. and the everything's slightly yep. different, they use yep. that same needle roller cage. Yep, that so is cool. Never changed it. And we, so here, Mr. Lang, I don't know if anybody would have had a really nightmare of a time to rebuild this gearbox. Here, Mr. Land Cruiser, we've got stuff in the yard. How many gearboxes have we opened up to, to nick bits out? Or, or? Like four or five yeah. gearboxes. You know, what, just, just getting stuff like the thrust. For the idler gear in here mm -hmm. and like the good condition thrust and yeah you just yeah it's, it's been epic yeah it's cool but um you know but things like that needle roller cage you, you spotted it and when i wonder if they're the same and bang you just slotted the um slotted the output shaft there straight into it and yeah. it's like perfect that's all the one of those um yeah. now this is another one so this is your full drive selector that's right correct um it's at, it's looking absolutely beautiful this um this vapor blasting really does does uh, do it wonders. Now there was loads of wear in the selector forks. That, that's it. Yeah, got Richard to 
weld them up, file it all down to suit so yep. the clearance is perfect in there now. So there's no, there'll be less slop in it. That's right. And this is cool. Um, the purists out there will not like this at all. What's this switch from, Mick? Yeah, Nissan Patrol. Look at that. So you can't, this was the yeah. switch, this is what we had. The switch, there's nothing left in there. Um, I tried to source it off Terrain Tamer and Toyota, no go. So I went down to the local supplier, um, went through their book and we matched it up to this and we've tested it, it that works. It works, yeah, well, so if it works, do it. This, um, this little epic free speed has now got a Nissan Patrol part in it, so yeah, that's cool. So you can see we've got all the shiny bits. This is the pointy end of the stick, the exciting time. Yes. Um, we've, we've had to make up some of this, you know, these, these bits were all broken. Yep. So we've managed to use one off a later five speed, um, grind it down a bit and yep. make it right. And with the plate in, it looks like it was factory. So now this is the point in, this is the time we put this back together. You've got your work ahead of you, that's for sure, Mick. I do. But um, it's really exciting time. So come on then, let's crack on. So look at it, we're here, we're done. Honestly, Mick has done a fantastic job of building up this, this gearbox. Uh, the man hours, just slogging away at this thing. We, we lost count um, on the man hours because it's just been such a mammoth task. We've, we've going from, you know, modifying gears, um, sourcing stuff, um, all the nitty gritty little things that you wouldn't even think about when building something like this. Now you've got to remember, this is a 1962 FJ43. So it's a column shift. Um, and this gearbox only ran for two years. And they were very, they were rare as it is in Australia. So getting the parts together to get this thing where it is today has just been a mammoth task. So I want to just touch on a couple of things, the period technology that's going on at the time in 1962. So they dropped it for a reason, obviously, that the, the the complexity of the, the column shift. Um, so these are the linkages for your column shift cables um, and they go through a rod into the gearbox. Now that in itself, they dropped that. So they only ran this gearbox for two years. They dropped that and went with the, the stick shift that came out the top. Also, look, you see, we've got something that um, cruiser guys, more later cruiser guys might, might recognize like a, a, a vacuum operated um, four wheel drive selector. Now they dropped this and then came back to it in 1987, 1986 with the 60 series Land Cruiser. So it's really interesting to see um, that something back in, they were using this technology back in 1969 with uh, vacuum operated selectors. Now this is our, this is our Nissan Patrol um, switch. We just, they chop the plug off there and wire it in however they need to. Now it's been a real pleasure to uh, have a little insight into this technology back in 1962 and um, an insight into why they changed and what they changed being here at Mr. Land Cruise and understanding the gearboxes that came later you see why they did away with some things beefed stuff up um, remember this this um, single piece transfer case ran for a long time right into the 70s so um, you know so they were doing some things right but there's definitely things that needed changing on this gearbox so I just want to thank everybody that's been involved in this build. I mean, there's been so many companies out there that have that've helped us out to, to create this, what can only be said is as a piece of art, I think. Um, Pioneer Finishes, who did the, the blasting of all the alley components, um, they just come up a, an absolute beauty. Look at it, the finish is just fantastic. We got first on finish here in Kabulcha, they do all our anodizing. Um, they're not just a tumbler, this guy systematically um, links every single nut and bolt and piece, um, does it all by hand, so there's no chance of getting anything lost. And when it's this rare, and the bits are this rare, you don't want to be losing anything. Either. So, um, Rob Tigard, Paul's mate Rob Tigard in the USA, without Rob, this build this this gearbox would have been dead in the water we were after a cluster we had two here in australia they were all destroyed rob came to the party got in touch with paul um, and sent one over so thank you very much rob we couldn't have done it without you Port's engineering here in caboolture they they helped us out with the all the the, the bearings the seals um it was we had to just each one, one by one, go through and match them up. So now how can I forget our good mate, Glenn at Northside Blast Coat, who, who just helps out all the time. He's done the blasting and the painting of all the black surfaces on here, all the steel. So like I said, an absolute piece of art. Mm -hmm.